Sisters are not simply children having a bubble bath. They are clearly children that are in a situation where they are being sexually assaulted. Clearly. Sadly, many of these cases have images depicting infants and toddlers. Five children are safe today after police across Canada carried out a major child pornography bust. The arrests were part of Operation Snapshot 3, which started in February and involved more than 40 police agencies. We're joined now by former homicide investigator and CEO of Investigative Solutions Network, Dave Perry. And uh, Dave, I want to start right there. Five kids saved. How significant is that, especially in this country? Well, even one child saved would be significant, yeah. but to hear about five at once in one particular investigation is pretty extraordinary. I've never heard of it in Canada on any project where they recovered so many children. Forty police agencies working together on yes. this. Uh, tell us, because of your, your particular expertise, what that's like and, and the investigation, because there's so many things at play here, and really it's investigators working with moving targets, right? It sure is, and policing has certainly changed over the last 20 years due to the Internet. And I can remember back in the early 2000s when the Toronto Police Service, for example, started their child pornography unit. And that was led by a very brilliant detective sergeant named Paul Gillespie, who was very creative. And Paul did things like write a letter off to Bill Gates and ask him, since your product is part of the problem, why don't you become part of the solution? And they actually have gotten involved, and things have really evolved quickly over the last 15 to 20 years, to the point where most police agencies right across the world have units like this who work cooperatively globally to attack the problem with child pornography. So uh, police would nail down maybe a specific IP address, but after that's done, then the real challenges start, right? Yeah, getting the IP address, as you know, is not significant in terms of knowing who it is that's right. operating you know, behind that IP address. So there's, that's only the start of the investigation. As we heard last week, the Supreme Court of Canada made a ridiculous decision where police officers now need a warrant even to obtain the simplest of information, who owns that IP address. So it slows down yet another process that could put children at risk for even a further period of time, which is extremely frustrating. You know, uh, these these arrests are made, and, and we've got so many people charged right across this country. Right. And we've talked about this before, but I think it, it bears talking about it again, the fact that these are people, these are your neighbors, right? These are neighbors, these are people you think you know, and everybody thinks, oh, it can't happen here. But the reality mm -hmm. is it absolutely can, and it absolutely does. It does, and they're from every walk of life. That's right. And the unfortunate thing is that with this kind of a crime, uh, it, it remains virtual in a lot of ways, and out of respect, obviously, for children and what's proper, people don't really know what's going on in that very sick and twisted world of child pornographers. And, you know, the police are very respectful when they talk about the images, but I don't think anybody knows exactly what they are. And I remember as a police officer seeing my first images. I can tell you I've walked through some of the worst homicide scenes in this country, and the first time that Paul Gillespie sat me down and showed me a new seizure of child pornography those are images that are seared in my mind forever, and I'll never be able to get rid of them. And that's what these investigators have to do every single day, going through tens of thousands, millions of images every day of children being abused at the most horrific level. This, is, this, is, this can't be softened by saying this is sexual abuse or this is sexual assault. These are images of infants being raped. These are, these are images of toddlers being tied up and raped and abused day after day after day. It's all they know in their poor lives. So it's a problem that needs to be, you know, uh, have a lot of attention. And I'm, I'm very pleased to see that Canada and Canadian law enforcement has stepped up in such a big way. And Canada is renowned worldwide in terms of their ability and their experience in child pornography investigations. We'll never control it. It's never, ever going to go away. But, you know, continued enforcement like what we're seeing here today is the best next step to manage it as best we can to make sure that we make the proper arrests and rescue children and, and try and let the public know that there are the, the police are watching. Mm. They're watching undercover, they're online, and they're going to catch more of these people. And the reality is, in the course of this interview right now, tens of thousands of people in this country are searching for Internet porn right now.
involving kids and others. You're right, right and now. not only are they searching for it, these people, they live and breathe this stuff. They're on subways, they're on GO trains, they're going to work, they're watching these images on their way to work, while they're at work, when they go home, when they're with their family sometimes. It's, it's such a sick and twisted, deviant behavior that they're, they're actually to the point where this is all they ever think about, it's all they do. So, and there are escalating factors to the whole process as well. Sometimes it's not enough just to simply trade and watch, and I don't mean to demean it when I simply am talking about from their perspective. And sometimes it gets to the point where that doesn't do it for them anymore, so they have to act out, and they will themselves become the offender. Dave, thank you. My pleasure.